Let's get to Ryan Clark on Brock Purdy. Woo! Harsh. Real. Real harsh. Listen to Ryan Clark talk about Brock Purdy. I'm about to um, make a confession. Mm. The single hardest thing I had to do this year was act like Brock Purdy deserved to be in the conversations with the other people we're mentioning in that tweet. Mm. Because he was playing extremely well and operating in that offense and distributing the ball to Kittle and Debo Samuel and Brandon Ayuk, we had to continue to include him in conversations with the Lamar Jacksons. We had to continue to include him in conversations with the Josh Allen. Those things are not alike. Brock Purdy is a fine player. Brock Purdy can operate in Kyle Shanahan's offense at an extremely efficient level. Brock Purdy doesn't raise the level of play of anyone around him. And so when you talk about Patrick Mahomes, Josh Allen, Lamar Jackson, the people around them benefit from having those sorts of players at the quarterback position. Brock Purdy benefits from having the sort of players he has at the skill positions around him. And so when we look at that game against the Green Bay Packers, even with Jordan Love throwing an inopportune, inexplicable interception to end the game, I was sitting there watching them going, man, the world should be, the NFL world should be excited that Jordan Love doesn't play for the San Francisco 49ers. And we are starting, at least in my opinion, to get into the realm the San Francisco 49ers used to be with Jimmy Garoppolo, where it was, yeah, with Kyle Shanahan calling plays, we could be really good. With the players around him, we could be really good. But can our quarterback take us to the next level? And now that it's getting down to the critical football moments, to the moments that turn good players into legends, that turn good teams into teams we never forget, you're starting to see. You don't take Brock Purdy over Jared Goff right now, and you for sure don't take Brock Purdy over the two dudes on the other side in the AFC. So if you're the San Francisco 49ers, you're thinking to yourself right now, this team that we were starting to run through our quarterback better run through Uncle Shannon's nephew, Christian McCaffrey. Because if it doesn't, they're going to find themselves at home again without a ring. God dang, ho, here we go again. <laughs> Woo! I am not a hater, but I do tell the truth too early. So some people confuse that with hate. You ever get early to a party and you just declare what it's going to be? People all oh, man, chill, wait, you don't know what you told man, wait. And then at the end of the party, be like, man, we should have left. <laughs> That's Ryan Clark right now. He at the Brock party. Real early, like, mm, I'm just trying to tell y'all, it ain't going to be what y'all think. Matter of fact, we've been here before. It was a Jimmy G party. God dang. Now, I am a fan of Jimmy G. I like his game. I understand what happened with the Raiders, and that has certainly skewed my vision, but all things considered, Jimmy G's a winner, right? But we know he has his flaws. We know he has his issues. Now, when you get drafted last overall in the NFL draft, you got your flaws as well. Now, you're in a great system with a great situation with a great team. So there's a lot of lipstick on this pig. Now, the question is how much bacon up in that sucker right there? How much can Brock Purdy cook up? Obviously, he's better than the last pick of the NFL draft, better than Mr. Irrelevant. But is he the guy they should throw the bag at and all of a sudden put themselves in salary cap purgatory? Because that's what happens when you bet on a quarterback. He better be that guy. I think most people would say that Brock Purdy, despite him having the stats this year, being a stat leader, besides him being the second year player already, two NFC championship games, you still got to say, let's just wait and see in terms of the approach with Brock Purdy, which is crazy because that's a harsh judgment for a dude who got the results. Ah, can't make, what do they say? You can't. What did they say? Second chance. Oh, you can't. Second chance for make a first impression. I don't know what the hell it is because I never make second impressions. My first impression is who I am. But the point is, Brock Purdy has that stain on his resume. And you ain't going to ever, ever, ever forget about it. You may try to move on, but be tethered to it like Ryan Clark sounds like he is right now. 
they don't get a second chance to make a first impression. I knew I was going to get that thing. So here's the thing. We're talking about judgments right here. Now, there's two ways to judge in this particular situation when you talk about Brock Purdy. The first way is you should judge a man by the distance traveled. That's an old Michael Irvin line I love. Judge a man by the distance traveled. You were Mr. Irrelevant. Now you're in your back-to-back -back consecutive NFC Championship games. You judge that man by that. You throw the bag at him. You say, I don't give a damn what's going on. Everybody can't do that, right? Only another quarterback in the NFC is doing that named Jared Goff, and he already been to a Super Bowl, and he a number one overall pick. I'm right there with a number one overall pick. What you talking about, Mr. Relevant? So you judge a man by the distant travel. You throw the bag at him. But then you also say, judge a man by where he is. And in this situation, you still got to throw the bag at him. He ain't deemed elite. He got the stats. He got the results, but you don't think he elite. Why not? Because somebody evaluated him coming out differently than he's playing right now maybe he's developed maybe y'all misinterpreted misconstrued misdiagnosed what kind of player he was maybe you just mislabeled him damn it that's a conversation i'm not throwing a bag at brock purdy because i don't have to right now he's on a rookie deal obviously and you want him to be satisfied but at the same time too many other things are propping him up for you to throw the bag at him. So all I know is with those type of results, he should get the bag thrown on him. It happened with Jimmy G. Jimmy G won seven games and got the highest contract in NFL history. And Brock Purdy sitting there like, I'm at the same franchise, same organization. They gave him that money. Y'all better hook me up. But they ain't going to hook him up. Guarantee you they don't hook him up. Now, if he don't ball out this game and be the reason, like he in that point in his career right now where we know he can win. We know he's capable. We know he's good. Now, we got to know if you're the reason. I think that's what Ryan Clark was trying to pick up on and say. So I understand what he was saying. Now, Ryan Clark is early to this party. A lot of people were like, eh. But he is declaring he ain't even in the conversation with those other guys. He ain't in the conversation with Josh Allen in terms of talent. You're right. But Josh Allen also ain't in the conversation and still playing because Josh Allen but is at home. So what y'all think about Brock Purdy? Y'all got love for him? What y'all think about Brock Purdy as this party goes on? Two years from now, five years from now, is Brock Purdy a dude or was he just propped up by the 49ers? Kind of like Jimmy G was. And then we saw Jimmy G go somewhere else. And then we realized that when you turn the lights on, she ain't that fine. <laughs> Is that going to be Brock Purdy in this situation? Y'all tell me. Y'all break that down.